No, it, it's around kind of like the, we're talking about the stereotypes and mm. like especially like stereotypes in comedy. Uh, I remember speaking to like a music artist and 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 how they define themselves as like are they a Bangla artist or this that this? and they yeah. just class themselves as an artist. Yeah, they can't really box themselves as being kind of a South Asian, uh, mm. you know, person in the in, in doing music. Do you see there's a danger that if you if if artists coming through from South Asian background sort of just stay in that box and then they have that problem of what you're saying where they only get cast in certain roles and be booked in certain types of shows yeah i mean that's 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 been an issue forever you know for many reasons the people who are making decisions are white they are white middle class men producers even the younger producers majority of them white middle class men so when they're commissioning stuff for tv they're going i don't really understand this can, can you can we look at it from a white person's perspective? Mm-hmm. You know, there's loads of things. There was a, an ITV drama um, about that that poor woman who got killed, and they told the story from like the um, police officer's perspective or the detective's perspective. And I remember going, "It's not your story, though. This is not yours. This is about the story about that poor woman who got killed." But I was like, "Okay, fine." So. You know, a lot of people don't get... So when, when people say to me, oh, we've not had anything since goodness gracious me on TV. And I'm like, yeah, because the people who are making decisions will only want to do stuff like goodness gracious me, really, generally. Like now there are more kind of Asian commissioners in and more people of colour who are like maybe at a decision-making level. So from a casting perspective, if you're right as white, their perspective is going to be a lot like different to anybody else's, right? So of course... You know, if they're going to go, like, I, you know, I've, I've spoken to producers before when they've t- talked about how problematic it is. They'll put a cast forward for whatever show and they'll be like, oh, we need to diversify it. OK, well, we've got a teacher here. Let's make them black. We've got a doctor here. Let's make them Indian. We've got, And they literally do that. But guess what? All those are little, little parts. They're never the lead. When was the last time you put on the telly and you saw a show, mainstream, British show, comedy, drama, whatever, and the lead person was Asian, and it was nothing to do with honour killings or terrorism or arranged marriages. or, or Like, all of our stuff has to be issue-led and trauma-based. Yeah. We can't just be living a life. We can't just be a family, you know, living living our lives. We can't just be somebody having an affair or, do you know what I mean? Or, like, someone yeah. just getting married. You know, what, like, it's never normal life for us. It always has to be other because we're not seen as being quote unquote normal and mainstream so that's always going to be an issue I always get female comedian British Asian comedian Indian comedian I've got no issue with being any of those things but I don't want to see it written down and I don't want to be introduced as that because nobody goes oh please welcome to the stage uh white British male comedian Michael McIntyre true true and until they do that I'm not having it I, I, I'm, I'm happy I called you comic actor and writer first. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll stop that now. But, because all of all of this speaks for itself. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's like when it's written down, when someone's writing about Peter Kay, nobody goes, oh, yeah, why northern male comedian Peter Kay? It's like, you just go, yeah, Peter Kay, comedian. So the language, again, is is, is something that is it's another, hell, right? is it, yeah, it's another battle in terms of stigma that, you know, to, to, to kind of fight yeah. through as well. Well, to kind of other you, right, to make you feel other. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Oh, and that, that's the thing that I've kind of just become really aware of in, in like the last kind of few years. And look, it, ask any comedian, ask any non-white comedian out there, whether they've been going for 10 years, whether they've been going for 10 minutes, every single one of them has had an experience in some way, shape or form when someone said to them, oh yeah, we'd love to have you on this gig, but there's already one of you on there. Mm-hmm. You normally get that in clubs. You know, when yeah. you used to go out in clubs, I, it, 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 I think I kind of, ex, I'm just trying to relate it back to the kind of experiences of where that other you, what you've just said. Yeah. And there used to be like, you have to, a, a queue for like all, all the glory going to the club. Yeah. And then there was another queue from there. Yeah. Oh, we got, we got enough of you lot tonight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, take it easy. And then yeah, yeah, yeah. It, used, it used to be like one in four, <laughs> yeah. one in one out kind of thing. That's like Holly Oaks now, isn't it? They have like one in one out when it comes to brown people. Um, <laughs> I, I'll just go, but I think it was it was ironically, I think Sanjeev Bhaskar was the last one. Is it Unforgotten on ITV? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he yeah. was kind of uh, gone through. But that, that triggered off a whole new discussion as well, because I remember sitting there going, around goodness gracious me, and, I, and I've kind of watched some of the recent ones. Yeah. Uh, I watched it back again. Right. And, and it feels like, 
a lot of the comedy sketches that you kind of see now like are more on Instagram mm -hmm. and it's literally yeah. the, the, that kind of stuff like yeah. Indian accent anyone yeah. putting on an Indian accent now all of a sudden they're going to start you know it, they all, it's becoming very samey samey yeah like, absolutely and, and I think like in terms of like the comedy movement there's is there any I think Paul Chowdhury is the uh, kind of like does kind of more darkish kind of stuff from from that way edgier. Which, yeah 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 and yeah. I think you know I think that kind of stuff is very safe in terms of like yeah. doing, doing a doing an accent or, or dressing up as the dad and mm -mm -mm. I think but also how many fun. times do you see Paul Chowdhury on a panel show I mean, not that he needs to do panel shows. Do you see what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, like he's he's incredibly successful, sold out so many, you know, arenas and stuff, sold out tours, like, you know, and I'm a big fan, but you kind of go, so we can't just have Paul Chowdhury and goodness gracious me, do you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> no, 100%. That, that, you know, but also, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a certain level, this is me personally speaking, just from like comedians that I'm seeing, where you kind of have to whitewash yourself mm -hmm. in order to be mainstream. Yeah, I think that's what I meant by the by the the question when I first started off around like, do you box this pigeonhole yourself as being in the South Asia, or do you kind of like, what, what I'm not even going to use those labels. I'm a comedian, and that's yeah, it. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And look, you know, me personally, I love doing the so-called Asian comedy nights. You know, they're mixed; yeah, it's a mixed yeah. audience, but I love doing them. I love it. It's the atmosphere. It's great. It's you know, people find it relatable. People find it funny. You know, it's like it very much feels like it's your people. When I do my show, when I do my solo show, like 90% of the audience is Asian. It's bloody brilliant. It's also brilliant when they're not. <laughs> you know, mm. it's just a very different atmosphere and a really different vibe. And no one's sitting in the front row with boxes of Tupperware. You know? <laughs> I broke it. It happened.